The Green Council, Episode 9, Queen Alicent Plots to Crown Her Firstborn Son. Beware, spoilers ahead. At night, the Red Keep. The fires in the throne room have been extinguished, and the small council chamber, as well as the courtyard, are dark. A small boy exits the dead king's bedchamber and makes his way down to the kitchens through the empty castle. Talia, Alicent's handmaiden, who we know is one of White Worm Mazaria's spies in the Red Keep, hears the boy's disturbing news. Talia informs Alicent, then lights candles in a specific window of the Red Keep, a signal to Mazaria that the king is dead. Alicent, overcome with emotion, reports to Otto her comprehension of Viserys' final words, his wish for his eldest son Aegon the to become king. The formation of what will later be known as the Green Council takes place in the small council chamber. Queen Alicent, sat at the head of the table. Otto Hightower, Hand of the King, looking smug, and Kristen Cole, Alicent's personal guard and a member of the King's Guard, stood by her side. Tealand Lannister, Master of Ships, sits at the opposite end of the table. Jasper Wilde, Master of Laws, Grand Maester Orwile, and the kindly old Lord Beesbury, Master of Coin, were also present. Harold Westerling, Lord Commander of the King's Guard, stands in the corner. Otto declares the king's death and that his dying wish was for Aegon the S to succeed him. It quickly becomes clear that several members of the small council, led by Otto, are relieved because they had been secretly planning this for some time. Alicent is taken aback, Lord Commander Westerling is disgusted, and Old Lord Beesbury is enraged. Kristen Cole steps up behind him, grabs his shoulders, and shoves him back into his seat but his head slams into the marble sphere doohickey they each use to register their presence at the table. Alicent deduces that Otto and the rest of the council intend to kill Rhaenyra in order to prevent her and Daemon from gaining enough followers to challenge Aegon. Lord Commander Westerling, who warmly welcomed young Rhaenyra home in the first scene of the series, goes from disgusted to horrified. When Otto orders Westerling to go to Dragonstone and extinguish Rhaenyra, he refuses, handing over the white cloak of the King's Guard and departing. Princess Helena, Aegon's sister-wife, is happily cross-stitching herself a nasty-ass spider while remaining ruthlessly on brand. She gives her nanny and twins, Jaehaerys and Yehara, lectures. Rhaenys has been locked in her bedchamber, but she can see guards rounding up the servants who know about Viserys' death through her window. Otto orders Eric Cargill, a member of the Kingsguard, to go into King's Landing with his twin brother Arik, find Aegon the Us, and return him to Otto and Otto alone without informing the Queen. The Queen, on the other hand, has sent Kristen Cole on the same mission, with Aegon's younger brother Aemon guiding him because Aemon is familiar with his brother's quirks. Alicent begs Kristen to bring Aegon to her and only her. Kristen and Aemon question a brothel owner in King's Landing, on the Street of Silk, who assures them that Aegon is a freak, and his tastes run rougher, less to the Street of Silk, and more to the back alley of Burlap, as it were. Eric and Arik's team is also investigating shoe leather while arguing over Aegon's right to rule. Eric is repulsed by the thought, which becomes even more repulsive when they come across one of Aegon's favorite haunts, a fighting pit where feral children are unleashed on one another. They also discover evidence that Aegon fathered some of these children himself. A white worm agent tells them she knows where to find Aegon, for a price, and only if she can speak with their boss. Kristen and Aemond are having no luck which allows Aemon to air his grievances against his brother and make a case for himself as someone with the intellect, drive, and combat skills to rule. Otto has gathered various lords of the realm in the Iron Throne room to announce that Aegon is now the heir and to request that they swear fealty. Most do, but two do not. Lord Caswell is one of the lords who swears allegiance to Aegon the Us. However, he is apprehended while attempting to flee the Red Keep before he can warn Rhaenyra, to whom he is actually loyal. He is hanged in the courtyard in full view of everyone. Mazaria, the White Worm, is met by Arik, Eric, and Otto Hightower. She discovered Aegon in Flea Bottom and took him somewhere safe. She'll reveal the location if they agree that when he becomes king, he'll put an end to the little scamp's fighting pits. Otto agrees to look into it after being impressed. Back at the Red Keep, Alicent pays a visit to the imprisoned Rhaenys, attempting to persuade Rhaenys that Viserys had a deathbed conversion. Rhaenys laughs at this. 
Eric and Arik find Aegon in a sept and attempt to take him home, but he complains that he doesn't want to be king and attempts to flee several times. Arik marches him out of the sept, while Eric, who is more disgusted than ever by Aegon, stands back. Kristen Cole and Aemon greet them on the steps. Kristen engages Arik in combat, while Aemon performs a flying tackle on a fleeing Aegon. Aegon begs his brother to let him go so that he can flee Westeros and never return. Aemon is taking the proposal seriously, as evidenced by the look in his eye. Kristen then wins the duel and places his hand on Aegon's shoulder. Allison has a fight with Otto that night. He accuses her of being squeamish and insists that leaving Rhaenyra alive was a mistake. Allison claims Rhaenyra will be offered reasonable terms in exchange for accepting Aegon. Aegon will be anointed right away, with the crown and blackfire, the Valyrian steel sword of Aegon the Conqueror. When she returns to her chambers, Laris greets her with the news that Talia, her handmaiden, is a spy for the White Worm. Not only that, but the Queen's father actively supports the spy network. Laris knows who is in charge and is ready to take them out. Alicent carefully removes her shoes and stockings while he speaks. Laris takes note of this. Alicent steps back, taking care to keep her feet visible. In disguise, Eric Cargill enters Raina's bedchamber and leads her out of the Red Keep. Rhaenys is escorted through the streets of King's Landing. She's determined to go to the Dragon Pit and retrieve her Dragon Mailies, but Eric warns her that they'll be expecting her to do so, so she should abandon the beast and head for the river in search of a ship. But she doesn't get the chance because the Gold Cloaks herd the townspeople in one direction. Rhaenys is separated from Eric and appears concerned, but she smiles when she sees where she and everyone else is being herded to. During the carriage ride to his coronation, Alicent tries to persuade a grumpy Aegon to rule with compassion and spare Rhaenyra's life. Aegon ignores his mother's wise advice on good governance and spends the scene complaining that his father never loved him. The coronation is surrounded by pomp and circumstance. Trumpets, anointing, the whole nine yards in Westeros. He wears the Valyrian steel crown of Aegon the Conqueror. The crowd isn't overjoyed until Kristen Cole exclaims, Aegon the King and the applause turns into genuine applause. Aegon raises his Valyrian steel sword, black fire, above his head. Then an enormous she-dragon named Maelys burst through the dragon pit's floor, carrying Rhaenys on her back. Some peasants fly through the air, while others are crushed and whipsawed by Maelys' tail. Maelys walks up to the stage, where Aegon, Alicent, Kristen, Otto, and others are standing. Rhaenys and Alicent have a moment together. Maelys roars at them and turns away from the massive dragon pit doors, which the gold cloaks are attempting to close. Maelys and Rhaenys escape and fly over and away from King's Landing to inform Rhaenyra and Daemon. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Click like and turn on notifications to help out the channel.